Science is the great debunker. There was a video going around a few years ago of a so-called fallist, someone who believed that modern science should fall on the basis in her argument that it cannot describe how lightning is able to be called down by witch doctors to uh, smite and kill the enemies of the people who hire them. For her, that was a disproof of science because it couldn't explain. And that shows both the limits of science and the limits of people who don't understand science. Science is about debunking. It's about you get an idea and you try to disprove it. And if that idea cannot be disproven, then it's deemed unfalsifiable and something which science simply cannot deal with. So if magic does exist in some form or other, and if it's not something which can be put forward into scientific experiment, then it is unfalsifiable. It cannot be disproven. Granted, the uh, witch doctor, if he does in fact call down the lightning and you can prove scientifically that it's done, then you're dealing not with what you call magic, which is the inexplicable, but rather science, which is the explicable. Now, the woman's objections to science that it can't prove something which she believes, but which doesn't actually exist, are not really valid in the sense that that's not what science is about. It's not about proving things, it's about disproving things. And anything that science has proven is in fact a case of it attempting to debunk something and failing, or else debunking something else which gives us an answer to something. And that's why science allows itself to evolve over time so that we went from steady states to big bang and so forth within cosmological theories. And science is always advancing as old theories are debunked in more and more nuanced and specific manners as technology and ideas advance. Science specifically refers to this type of idea of debunking. And so when I was speaking about arguments for God, and I will firstly repeat those arguments, though this specific presentation is not about them. I spoke of the fact that everything that exists has a cause and there must be a first cause, but that cannot have a cause. Otherwise, it's not the first cause, and you can't just go back infinitely and continue and continue because there must be a cause behind every effect. And eventually, you have to go to infinity minus one to a first cause or a first set of causes of all things. Otherwise, you simply can't logically have a cause for everything. So science has that type of problem of being within cause and effect. It can't prove things which are causes of such things, which an atheist might refer to as the God of the gaps, that type of argument of there must be something before something which causes. But I take that one step further in my arguments where I say that giving a future example of if you have a meeting which you're postponing and the meeting is on Thursday and you postpone it on the Wednesday to the next Thursday and on the next Wednesday you do the same and continue for all time, the meeting never actually happens. And if you go back in time, let's say the Big Bang must happen, but before the Big Bang or whatever the first cause is, there must be an infinite amount of potential, though not time in the sense of cause and effect, but potential in which nothing was created. And that time must literally be infinite, which means that whatever was created must always have happened earlier to an extent that it never actually would have happened unless something which is not governed by cause and effect caused it to happen. And something which is not governed by cause and effect is what a human being might term free will. It's what we expect every other human being to have when we interact with them from a moral perspective, from a perspective of who are you. And as research with dementia patients has shown, where someone's morals seem to change, that's where people feel they don't know them anymore. So our knowledge of other people is our knowledge of what they do with their free will. And the idea here is that if something is not cause and effect, then it is free will. And the universe itself, 
must have been created by free will. But that's not a scientific argument. That's not something I can take into a lab and attempt to debunk. But there are plenty of things which are deemed miracles, which have been taken into labs to see if they can be debunked, where you found that something is in fact really blood, where it's uh, said to be uh, transformed into blood from bread or something like that, where you find that certain things really existed at a certain period of time, and where you find that claims of medical miracles have not be, been debunked by scientists who were set about to explain them and to essentially debunk them. That's where for saints within the Catholic Church to declare a new saint, there need to be miracles, generally medical miracles to prove it, in order for an exorcist to be sent out to um, banish a demon, uh, to exorcise a demon. Uh, there has to be a process where people such as psychologists deem that there's not in fact a mental illness for the person and for there to be a demon they have these certain tests like someone knowing languages they shouldn't or having extreme strength or things like that so it's the sort of a reverse of a miracle of something evil and an unexplained versus something good and which cannot be debunked by science as yet but simply because a miracle has not been debunked by science today doesn't mean it won't be tomorrow. That's just the nature of science. It doesn't prove, it fails to disprove. Just as someone who's acquitted of, of murder has not been declared by the court uh, with certainty not to be a murderer, but rather has been declared by the court that there's insufficient evidence to say that they are a murderer. So it's a different type of standard. Now, when it comes to personal prayer, this is one of the main reasons people believe in God or the gods or whatever it might be, because they pray for something and it seems like that prayer gets answered. In other words, they have personal encounters with seeming miracles. Now, you might say this is simply recall bias, where they remember when they've asked for something and it was answered, but forget when they asked for something and it wasn't. Though, when you delve more deeply into it, quite often it does seem like the answers might be more than chance, but not absolute. You see, if I were to pray for something and that thing definitely happened every time I prayed for it, then we could say that's not actually God answering me, that's me doing something. That might be proof of some sort of telekinesis or some sort of additional control of the human brain has over the world. But if it's inconsistent, but consistent enough to show a pattern, that's usually something which causes people to have a religious sort of basis to their life. And the thing about religious bases to a life is that most people in the world hold a religion and most people in history have held a religion, including most people who are deemed highly intelligent. Your Nobel Prize winners are generally people who have a religion. Atheism is and always has been a minority view within the world. And yet science is quite important and being able to put ideas such as miracles or miraculous events, which can be debunked by science, which are falsifiable events under the microscope to try and debunk them in order to determine that they have failed to be debunked this time at least is an important thing to do and something which often is done. So that's getting from the sort of big idea of God, the concept of God to things which actually can be taken into the lab, whereas God himself might be a unwilling subject when it comes to being taken into a specific lab at a specific time. Um, although we have historic records of um, ideas such as Jesus coming and dying and rising again and doing miracles in front of people and so forth, in the modern sense, as we can't call God as though he were our servants as though we were engaging in some sort of magic. We do have these supposed miracles which we can look at and try and debunk. And a lot of miracles have not been debunked despite science trying to debunk them. You might say, well, tomorrow they might be debunked and that's true, but that's all science can do. Science can attempt to debunk. Philosophy tries to find truth. Science tries to find error and falsifiable error. 